um, in this video I will try to develop complex and nuanced thoughts about Africans and if you wonder uh, from what point of view do I speak I know that I am what Hegel calls the negative and also reason and reason is a singular consciousness which knows that the world is one with itself and in order to liberate myself I, I need and I want to recognize myself in the world and the world is a very complex and, and conflicted place so I have to recognize uh, the complexity of the world which is uh, not simply uh, exp expressed <clears throat> uh, also I have a conflict within me between my empirical self which is the individual that you see and what I call my higher self which is the thinking activity and the thinking capability within me my ability to express through the spoken word universal truths which are logical truths and my lower self is um, motivated by instincts tendencies biases prejudices desires uh, and so on and so forth and my higher self always speaks the truth and the truth is the same for every thinking entity so my higher self is your higher self too whether you are black or white or leftist or Asian whatever uh, then Hegel Hegel is uh, one way of looking at Hegel is to say that it's the 19th century philosopher of uh, in Germany uh, who taught philosophy in Berlin in other cities but mostly Berlin and Hegel says that the individual is worthless that individuality is the realm of opinions and opinions are worthless when we talk about philosophy uh, that only reason and only spirit are important but Hegel himself was an individual if he existed and he was prejudiced and biased and, and influenced by his own empirical existence because uh, yeah, so it's very difficult to abstract oneself completely from one's own empirical determinations. That's what I wanted to say. And also, I have a negative view of the world, which means because I am separated from the world, I can see the broad picture of the totality. So that's the point of view um, from which I am talking. I will try to be as honest as I can about the question of Africans and, and blacks and I will apply the method which I believe is the only correct method of knowledge namely to adopt an encyclopedic view of the totality and in order to understand one element of reality one must try to the best of one's ability to encapsulate and to encompass and to to grasp the whole unfolding of being so I will begin by a chronological view uh, in the realm of nature there is cosmological evolution which brings about the, the creation or the, the appearance of the solar system and the earth and the earth is a, a planet uh, with an atmosphere and with um, climatic determinations there are various continents which from a cosmological point of view are the product of the the movement of the tectonic plates i don't know how you say it in english the the the, the movement of the, the the surface of the earth and the separation of the continents and each continent has its particular um, uh, um, geological and climatic determinations and um, biologists teach us that the conditions of uh, the climate in Africa have made it possible for uh, apes to evolve and apes have evolved into humans and according to some biologists the primordial humans 
uh, come from Africa. So in this sense, we are all Africans. Our ancestors were all Africans. I, I don't know if it's true or not, because some hypothesis says that there were uh, men who evolved in Asia or in Europe. I don't know. But if we adopt the mainstream view is that men, what we call Homo sapiens, or, or uh, Homo um, ergaster, Homo habilis, the, 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 the genus Homo emerged in Africa. So, yeah, that's uh, the, the connection between uh, physics through meteorology, climate, uh, the structure of the planet, and biology. The physical conditions, from a chronological point of view, enabled the emergence of of life and this particular type of life that we call humans and here we're interested in the particular uh, type of humans that we call Africans. So from an evolutionary point of view, uh, all human groups have a certain intelligence which is distributed in a bell curve. That's true for every people and on average uh, black Africans have a lower IQ than than whites for instance but it's not to degrade them to say that because whites have an on average a lower iq than asians and asians have on average a lower iq than jews that's how things are it doesn't mean that all whites are more intelligent than all blacks there are many blacks who are much more intelligent than many whites because out of mathematical necessity because nature functions in such a way that intelligence is distributed in a broadly bell shaped curve and yeah so yeah and also studies have shown that there is also um, a bell curve or some sort for the the distribution of uh, the size of the penis in males and there is a correlation correlation is not rigorous causation it's not because two determinations are quantitatively correlated that they are strictly uh, one is the effect and the other. There are other elements which are which must be considered, but the broad view, which must be um, studied more thoroughly, but is that IQ and, and penis size have evolved not strictly, but broadly in an invert proportions because the size of the penis is connect, correct, um, correlated to the, um, uh, the, the level of testosterone and that Apparently, the peoples who migrated in the northern climate had a lesser need for testosterone because they had to cooperate more in a harsher environment, which reduced the level of testosterone between males, which had an, a, a consequence of reducing the size of the penis. And this need for um, collective organization and, and planning and working together created or, or brought forth uh, higher intelligence on average among these peoples and this is the reason why Asians on average have a smaller penis than than blacks or even than whites but also on average a higher IQ so yeah and this is uh, widely known in the public because people who have access to pornography they know that on average blacks have a larger penis it's everyone knows it uh, more or less and less people know but many people believe that blacks on average have a lower IQ than whites it's not true for every black but on average out of this mathematical distribution of the bell curve it is becoming more and more more and more widespread in the public consciousness so yeah and an example which is often illustrated is that in the NBA the National Basketball Association in the US most players are blacks because to be a good basketball player, it requires to be strong and tall and, and, and agile. And um, yeah, so people say, yeah, it's because blacks are oppressed and they, they try to find a, a way to success in, in playing sports and they should focus on, on studying instead of playing basketball. But the truth is the, the characteristics of the sport that we call basketball is made in such a way that athletic players have a higher pro, a higher um, statistical chance of, of performing and that statistically blacks on average are more athletic than whites or Asians. There is other counterexample, Yao Ming, 
and, and Steve Nash and whatever, but on average, the best basketball players are blacks and, and the most basketball players at the top level are blacks. And this is for partly, partly socioeconomic reasons, of course, but mostly biological reasons. So yeah, then there's the question of demographics. <coughs> Studies have been made to show that within the human population, there are apparently um, a spectrum of um, distinction between the RK strategic in reproductive method, um, in the sense that some groups of humans, it's true with, within the different ethnic groups, but also within the different individuals. Some seek a strategy, which means to maximize the number of children in order to uh, increase the chances of, of reproductive success. And some had adopt unconsciously, of course, another strategy, which is to have less children, but to invest more so that the, the greater investment in education and resources will enable the, the children and the offspring to, to, to they themselves to have more success. So it's a, a distinction that we find within the biological realm and studies by, by Rushton have been made to show that uh, it's possible that from a biological perspective, it might exist within humans also. And <coughs> blacks in Africa have, on average, a lot more children than many other groups of humans. But the question is, is it uh, a biological determination? Is there a biological tendency among blacks to have more children? Or is it the result of socioeconomic conditions? It's a difficult question to answer because the Amish in the US, which are white, white Europeans, uh, they are apparently the population with the, one of the highest birth rates in the whole of in the whole world, and and the Jews, the the Orthodox Jews in Israel also have a very high number of children. And Israel and 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 the U.S. are very uh, rich country, but the Amish live in in poverty. So uh, <laughs> um, it's complicated because blacks who have a higher standard of living in Western countries, for instance, they tend to have lower, uh, a lower birth rate. So the question whether demographics and the number of children is genetically or socioeconomically determined is a very complex question to which I have no answer. But the, the, the example and the illustration of the Amish seem to, to, to show that when the, the religious and, and socioeconomic conditions are present, the biological determinations become indifferent. So that's food for thought. Then, according to the structure of Hegel's encyclopedia, what I've just talked about now is the realm of nature, the determination of physics, chemistry, and biology. Now we enter the realm of what he calls subjective spirits, which is the realm of anthropology, psychology, and consciousness. I, as an empirical individual, I am a European, and I, I, I do not know the, the African psyche. I cannot enter the African soul from the perspective of my empirical self. So I don't know what an African soul is made of because I inhabit a body, an, a, a European soul. But what I can know is that from what I have experienced in my life as an empirical individual is that the, the, the male Africans have a very strong sense of virility of manlyhood, of courage, masculinity, a tendency to be violent also, and to show off. Not all Africans, but there's this, uh, this tendency from my perspective within Africans to, to show off, to, to like to, to dress well when they, when they are capable of affording um, good clothes and nice clothes. They like to show off and to, to give an external image of themselves, which is uh, impressive and, and um, um, uh, charismatic in the external appearance. That's what I've noticed. So that's what I can say from my own perspective. Also, I know that blacks uh, in, in Western countries have uh, relative important success with white women because white men, on average, have become decadent and weak. And women seek strength and, and audacity and, and will and and confidence and blacks on average in the western countries they are more confident uh, because whether of, of their biological characteristics or because of the social characteristics i don't know m probably because of their biology they are more confident and they have therefore uh, in comparison to the socio-economic status of blacks they have a higher proportion of success with white women 
uh, because they they are not afraid like white men have become afraid of speaking to women and and, and, and yeah so and I know that w some whites resent blacks for their success with white women and that creates a lot of resentment in in the in the right wing white communities because white uh, because black males uh, have more sexual relationships uh, in comparison to their socioeconomic status than whites with the same socioeconomic status because they are more courageous and they are more daring and more bold that's just, just that's just how things are then about the question of pornography some whites enjoy watching pornographic videos in which black males have sex with white women they they might find this not attractive but at the same time they do watch these kind of videos so a part of them enjoys watching a white woman being <clears throat> made love to if one might speak uh, by a black man because it's a symbol of virility and manhood and they they themselves see, feel degraded uh, in comparison to the masculine features of, of black porn actors and also some blacks enjoy watching the same videos because they unconsciously experience this as some sort of revenge a revenge for white oppression and now look and now black can have sex with white women and we can uh, f word your women and there's some sort of of, of pleasure in, in taking revenge indirectly uh, so both some blacks and some whites enjoy watching interracial porn for different reasons but both enjoy um, these kind of uh, <clears throat> videos then we enter the realm of objective spirit in a hegelian view of things which is law uh, legislation, economic life, sociology, and later history, and also politics. Uh, what I can say is that the common belief in the West is that most, if not all, of blacks' problems are caused by whites. That's a joke that Zizek makes, that the white liberals are the real white supremacists because they believe that all the problems of all the blacks all over the world are caused just by whites that blacks are totally passive and they 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 they, they, didn't, they, they are so uh passive that they, they are not even uh strong enough to 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 do evil on their own that's what white liberals believe so the white liberal in his uh philosophy chair in in uh, los angeles or new york or boston or wherever he or she believes that he is responsible for every dying and starving black children for every uh black uh, murder for every problem of black whatever and this feeling of guilt among whites creates the will to to help blacks and there are tremendous amount of money which have been sent and and are being sent to to african countries uh food and, and supplies and medicines and money and infrastructures are being built because whites feel so guilty that they want to help the, to, to help Africans and um, also uh, what I this this also happens in the in the Western so here I was talking about uh, humanitarian help from the West to Africa but it exists also within Western countries where the same white liberals want to endorse the welfare state to to bring resources from themselves and the white population mostly but also blacks who pay taxes but to distribute predominantly to the lower uh, socio-economically gifted or advantaged or privileged classes of the population and they want to redistribute money to the to the less uh, privileged and uh, that's humanitarian help within uh, the same society also what i know is that i read this in the book socialism by uh, the problems with so socialism by di lorenzo and the countries which have been colonized the longest historically by France and England are those who today, many decades after the end of colonization, enjoy the higher standards of living and are the most prosperous. That's just how things are. Uh, also in this book, I know that there is a black intellectual uh, from Ghana, I think, who criticizes blacks. He's a libertarian black, a libertarian intellectual who criticizes the nepotism 
and, and, and the failures of blacks, and uh, he uh, accuses blacks of being responsible for their own failure in Africa. So he, he doesn't accuse whites or colonialism or whatever. He says that blacks have a part of responsibility because they themselves are partly responsible for some of the failures. So that's a, a work of intellectual honesty. If a, if an, a white intellectual said that, he would be accused of neo-colonialism and racism. But here a black intellectual says, says that and he's respected by white libertarians and probably resented by black, uh, some black who read these critiques because the, in the same way that white um, workers or white liberals resent uh, white libertarian intellectuals. So whether you're black or, or white, you have the same problem um, with, yeah. Uh, I, I also know that from a sociological and economic perspective, blacks in the West earn on average less money than whites, but they earn much more money in the West than if their ancestors or themselves, depending on if they are immigrants or second generation or third generation immigrants, or in the case of Afro-Americans, it's even more complex, but they earn a lot more money in the West than if they or their parents or grandparents had stayed in whatever African country they come from. So that's, that's ambiguous. Uh, and there has never been any black uh, a person who has had a higher standard of living in 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 in, in the entire history of Africa than, uh, uh, on average, I mean, than the the the, the Afro Americans or the Black who live in Europe or in the Western countries. So yeah. And uh, I also know that uh, whites themselves in the U.S. they earn on average less money than Asians and less money than Jews and more money than Hispanics. So it's not just whites who earn more than blacks, it's a, a continuous um, spectrum. And uh, I also know that the welfare state benefits the, the populations which are the less privileged socioeconomically, and on average, blacks are on the bottom end of the socioeconomic ladder, on average, not all blacks, but that's an average, uh, and therefore, if that's a syllogism, if the welfare state uh, benefits the poor, and if there are a higher proportion of poor blacks uh, within the, the population of poor, then on average, the, the welfare state benefits blacks more uh, than other groups of people. That's an Aristotelian syllogism. And the question is, who finances the welfare state? Every citizen, everyone who pays taxes, finances the welfare state. But who, on average, pays more taxes to finance the welfare state? Uh, in white countries, these are because the population is majority white. This is the, the, the white population who finances the majority of the welfare state. They also benefit more because they are proportionately more numerous. But that's complicated. Uh, now, the question of history. It's still within the realm of objective spirit. White brought violence and crime and oppression to Africa. That's well known. But to be honest, what I know from the history of Africa comes from what I've read about Hegel. And yeah, but um, there was violence in Africa before whites. There was slavery and oppression in Africa before whites uh, through the Muslim uh, slave trade, but also through internal black slavery. So whites did not invent slavery in Africa. They brought it to a more um, systematic and more oppressive uh, system, but it existed before whites. And also, if one is to be honest, whites brought violence and crime and oppression. But they also brought medicines and health and institutions and infrastructures. And the African population since the beginning of European colonization has been multiplied by, I don't know the numbers, but a tremendous quantitative increase. That cannot be denied. Uh, it must have been multiplied by, I think, by 10. I think that there was a I don't know the numbers, but the, the, the increase in the population of blacks in Africa 
since the intervention of white colonizers has been an exponential growth. That's a, a mathematical demographic truth. Uh, I also know uh, that there were um, African kingdoms and there may have been a tendency to, to erase parts of, of, of uh, African uh, history. I, I don't know the, the, the details of historiography by the colonizers, but I know that there were prosperous African kingdoms, but uh, it cannot be compared to the civilizational um, achievements of, of Europeans or Asians or, or, or North, Northern Africans or Jews or there were civilizations in Africa, but not developed and, and, and prosperous and, and, and creative as in other parts of, of, of the world that I've just mentioned. Also, uh, the, the great African leaders that I know of from an empirical point of view appeared and developed and grew in opposition to white oppressors. And in the history of Europe, with which I'm much more familiar, uh, France, what was before called Gaul, uh, the, the land of the Celts, the land of the Gauls, the, the, the Gauls and the Celts were different names for the same tribe of Indo-European peoples. Uh, in the French history, French history began officially uh, by the Roman colonization, the wars of Julius Caesar. So the first uh, French, France comes from the 5th century when Clovis, a Frankish uh, king, uh, a king of, of a, a leader of a, of a Germanic tribe, gave France, unified France, or what would later become modern France, its political and religious unity. And he was a Germanic uh, tribe leader, but what was the geographical territory of what would later become France, so Gaul, the first uh, French, which is actually Gaul, uh, character that we learn or used to learn in, in France is Vercingetorix, the, the Celtic, Gaulish leader who opposed Julius Caesar. So French history began by an opposition between Roman civilization and, and, and pagan, or the Romans were also pagan, uh, between Roman civilization and, and Gaul or Gaulish and Celtic resistance. And both uh, characters are important in the history of France. And um, both Vercingetorix and Caesar are considered fathers of France. And the French, historically, especially uh, uh, in, in the Middle Ages and, and, and after uh, the, in, in the Renaissance and even later uh, in, in the modern age, uh, some French leaders and aristocrats consider themselves to be the heir of uh, the, the, the inheritors of the Roman Empire. And French culture is, is Roman and Latin and, and, and Greek also. So... Uh, in, in the mind of a, of a culturally French person, the Roman colonization has been fully integrated and a, a, a real French uh, uh, culturally educated person has his entire cultural substance uh, within the, the Roman and Latin uh, heritage. Although the Romans colonized and murdered and enslaved uh, the ancestors of the French. So, yeah. And the same is true of Germany. In Germany, uh, one of the first um, historical character known is Arminius or Hermann, who defeated in 9 AD the legions of Augustus. And, and this prevented Rome from conquering Germany. And he's considered to be a Germanic hero. And also later uh, in, the, in the 8th century, uh, AD, uh, there were battles, violent battles between Charlemagne and Widukind. There was the, 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 the attempt to Christianize Germany by the wars against the Saxons led by Charlemagne and the pagan resistance led by Widukind. And both are also considered fathers of modern Germany. And, and one arose in opposition to the other. And uh, yeah, so 
about the black historical characters that I am vaguely familiar with from my empirical point of view. There's Toussaint Louverture, who was a Haitian, I guess, who wanted to implement the ideals of the French Revolution uh, in Haiti and to rebel against French domination in the name of French ideals. And then there's, a, I know, Dubois, who was a, a black writer and intellectual of the early 20th century. I'm vaguely familiar. Uh, I know Martin Luther King. So all, all of them for now have a, a reason, arise or other reason, have arisen in opposition to, to white domination and white oppression. There's Martin Luther King, who uh, tried to, to promote um, n not anti-racism, but a, a thought which would go beyond racism. He was not an anti-racist. He was not a racist either. He was, one may say, he was a Christian. Then there's Malcolm X, uh, Nelson Mandela, of course. And um, they all developed against whites and they are considered by whites, at least, and maybe by some blacks, as heroes. And in the West, we are taught to admire these figures, Martin Luther King, uh, not Malcolm X, but Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela and Obama. And I'm sure, no, I'm not sure. I, there may be a possibility that Obama is loved more uh, by whites than by blacks because white liberals felt so good about themselves when Obama was elected he, they, they, because they it, it, it showed to them how oh, it removes us from the guilt a, a little bit so Obama is is loved as a symbol by white liberals I think he's loved even more than blacks because I know that there, there are many blacks who were disappointed by Obama and from a strictly socio-economic standpoint his uh, tenure, uh, the, 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 the eight years as a president, uh, were kind of a failure from a strictly economic standpoint. It's not, it was not particularly brilliant, but the symbol uh, was, of course, very significant. So, yeah. Uh, so now we enter the realm of, of absolute spirit, which is art, religion and philosophy. Uh, I know that there is African art and that whites love, some whites, white liberals love African arts. They find some sort of primitive magic in African art. But if I'm honest as an empirical individual, there's no comparison between African sculpture or architecture or, or whatever and, and European art. It's in a different league. Uh, Greek art, classical art, romantic art. Uh, European art can be also very degenerate, but the classical uh, art of Europeans is without comparison. Uh, then the realm of music. In the, in the modern West, many people know about black music um, and whites love black music, jazz and, and um, uh, the uh, soul, I don't know if you call it um, R&B and, and soul, soul means the soul, but there's also a musical movement which is called soul and uh, re reggae, raga, reggae, uh, rap, hip hop. So uh, whites love, some whites, white liberals love that black can express their creative genius in music. But at the same time, some the, the same whites feel guilty in a sense that if we say that blacks are good musicians, isn't that some sort of racist prejudice? Because in the view of, of racists, blacks are good musicians, but just good musicians. So there's this conflict within the, the white psyche. Uh, but overall, many people love black music. Lil Wayne, Rihanna, uh, Nas, uh, Nas, I don't know how you, you call it, Jay-Z, 50 Cent. And I will put a, 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 a link to a song by Prodigy uh, in an album titled Hegelian Dialectics. That's a very speculative song. And uh, if I wanted to say something, I said that Rihanna, uh, if I were honest, is one of the most comical uh, woman ever. She's really, uh, she's brilliant and she's, uh, she's a great woman. <laughs> Uh, because I understand her music and, and she's really comical and, 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 and really profound also. And she has many aspects in her psyche and she's a real woman and then she's lovable. And uh, that's the reason why 
she's so successful because she's really talented. Uh, but uh, you already knew that. <coughs> uh, also, I, I wrote that uh, white kids grow up in the West listening to black music uh, because black music teaches uh, a certain sense of resilience and strength and courage and virility and manhood and Europeans are not allowed to express their own manlyhood, their, their own masculine strength because in the mind of uh, the modern West a masculine European is a Nazi um, so because of <clears throat> the problems with Nazism, National Socialism Europeans are not allowed to express their masculinity any longer that's the whole problem uh, in the West today uh, and European aristocrats as I call it the, the, the right-wing aristocratic Europeans think that the fact that white kids listen to black music is a form of of degeneracy uh, but uh, white kids who listen to black music they can draw inspiration from the strength of blacks to increase their own strength and to transcend themselves by learning from blacks who are black artists in the hip-hop industry are very strong mentally and physically and uh, yeah and these values of resilience strength courage they are aristocratic european values but because what is European, as I've learned, is universal because the particularity of Europe is to be universal. That's quite complex. Uh, because these values are European, they are universal. And universal values are true for all peoples. So that's why Europe is so complex. Uh, also, what I, what I know, it's a common joke on the internet, is that the, the hip-hop industry, the, the rap music industry, is mostly black with many very talented creative artists, but it's white on top because the king of rap uh, is, is Eminem. So, yeah. But also, I know that Eminem's best friend was black. So, uh, if I have the opportunity, I will make a video on Eminem because he's a very complex uh, figure. And there's a... Um, uh, there's a passage that I would like to uh, read from a song, uh, one of Eminem's uh, pr most profound songs, when he lost um, his best friend, uh, Proof, I think the name was. Uh, I will read the passage because it's a, a creative way of transcending the race problem. Uh, he says, uh, we were always brothers. I never thought about each other's skin colors till one day we was walking up the block in the summer it was like 90 degrees i was catching a sunburn trying to walk under the trees just to give me some comfort i'm moaning i just want to get home and i look over a new shirt is off i'm like you're gonna fry you're like no i won't i'm black stupid and black people they got melatonin in their skin we don't burn meanwhile my face is glowing and i feel like i'm on fire and the entire time you're just laughing at me and snapping at me with your shirt, bastard. So <clears throat> that's a way of using racial science to overcome the racial divide and to be able to find the strength to find... Um, it's only through spirit that differences can be erased and, and that people can be made equal spiritually. And this, this song by Eminem, difficult as a, a tribute to his best black friend is a very profound uh, song so yeah and uh, finally in the realm of absolute spirit I will conclude with philosophy I, I don't know any black philosopher but um, I will say that in the realm of philosophy Europeans are on a league of their own but European philosophy is precisely uh, the attempt to conceptualize the totality of being which includes within itself uh, Europeans and non-Europeans. So, um, the European thought is the thought which includes its own opposition within itself. And uh, that's what I had to say. So, yeah. I try to be nuanced and honest and uh, 